Epilepsy affects half a million people in the UK alone. I'm going to tell you a little bit about EEG, the number one tool in diagnosing and discovering epilepsy. Epilepsy is a neurological condition where there is a tendency for a patient who suffers from epilepsy to have seizures which originate in the brain. Although it is possible to have a seizure which doesn't originate in the brain or a non-epileptic seizure. Right now there are promising new trials of a new blood test designed to detect epilepsy which measures the level of prolactin in the blood. However, the number one method of detection and diagnosis of the disease is the EEG. So let me show you one. Happened and that results in a sensation of pain. An EEG records the brain's spontaneous electrical activity usually over a short period of time between 20 and 40 minutes. These electrical readings are then taken from multiple electrodes placed along the scalp. Diagnostic applications generally tend to focus on the spectral content of EEG, that is, the type of neural oscillations that can be observed in the EEG signals. Electroencephalogram, which is basically, as we can see here, a plot of the electrical activity of the neurons uh, composing uh, the brain. The source of these signals, the net electrical impulses generated by action potentials in the brain cells. The brain is made up of a network of cells which operate electronically, like an organic computer. These brain cells, similar to nerve cells in construction, make up a neural network of cells which communicate to each other via electrical signals. The signals travel through the network via an action potential. Let's see how this works. The cell becomes rapidly depolarized and repolarized after reaching a threshold potential. This polarity, or difference in charge between the inside and outside of the axon, is carried down the axon until it reaches a synapse. The charge is influenced by concentrations of ions within the cell and controlled by active and passive ion channels in the cell membrane. These channels not only maintain the charge, but are also very important in the transfer of this potential between cells at the synapse. It's these signals that we're interested in. However, technical difficulties arise in making these recorded signals useful. For a start, EEG does not register the electrical impulses from specific cells within the brain. It instead gives us an indication of the current that flows along the scalp, information which on its own presents very little use. Also, at any given moment, countless neurons are firing which add to the surface signal. The way in which we capture this information is important, as is the way in which we process it. The electrodes are linked together to produce a range of signals. By analysing these signals, and using knowledge of which electrodes produce them, we can tell what sort of activity we are seeing in the brain, and roughly where in the brain this activity is taking place. The sum of this activity produces a large dipole. The action potentials we are interested in are too short in duration to leave a useful electronic trace. Instead, we look to the excitatory postsynaptic potential a process which lasts 10 milliseconds, 9 milliseconds longer than the action potential. As the excitatory postsynaptic potential directly follows the action potential, an increase in EPSP is directly proportional to an increase in action potential activity. These signals produce distinct waves, which are characteristic of typical neural activity. Voluntary muscle contraction, for example, will register very differently on an EEG to, say, subconscious neural activity. This is useful as it allows us to see which parts of the brain are being used for certain activities. It is also useful for allowing us to pinpoint where in the brain the abnormal signals originate, indicating possible cysts or areas of brain damage. EEG can help the surgeon find the area of brain damage and minimize the risk of damaging healthy functioning brain tissue. Whilst physical abnormalities can be found using an MRI scan, EEG is much cheaper. 
Abnormalities can be found by testing a patient using an EEG whilst resting. However, not all patients show abnormal signals whilst resting. In such cases, provocation techniques would have to be used, such as audio-visual stimuli or touch. Through measuring electrical activity along the scalp via tiny electrodes, EEG helps diagnose the patient, shows the doctor the affected part of the brain, and aids the surgeon in removing the problem. Thanks for watching.